Well, it's time for our Africa Health, uh, Africa 54 Health Report. And here with some new information on dengue fever is health correspondent Lino Madou. Hello, Lino. Hello, Vincent. The French drug manufacturer Sanofi Pasteur says its vaccine against dengue fever protected more than half of all children in a late-stage clinical trial. The vaccine was tested in Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand and Vietnam on more than 10,000 children protecting up to 56% of the children. Another large trial is underway in Latin America, and those results are expected later this year. Dengue fever is a mosquito-borne illness that infects an estimated 400 million people each year. It mainly occurs in tropical and subtropical areas, including in regions of Africa and Southeast Asia. A researcher at Kenya's Medical Research Institute, Kemri, created a map that he hopes will revolutionize the way malaria is tackled in Africa. According to the medical journal The Lancet, Kenyan scientist Abdisalan Noor has created the most accurate high-resolution maps showing the intensity of malaria infection in Africa. Malaria is a mosquito-borne disease and kills an estimated 627,000 people every year. Most victims are children under the age of five in sub-Saharan Africa. Nor says the maps can provide data that can change the way governments and international organizations plan for and invest in malaria control. The maps highlight where, where progress has been made in Africa in terms of reducing the transmission of malaria. They also highlight where the the transmission intensity has been resilient, has been stubborn, and we haven't seen significant reductions. Within a country, there are places where it's high transmission, in others it's low transmission. And these maps are very important tools to inform national programs where to target their resources. They know which people are at risk, what is the size of this population, and what interventions suit them best to control the disease. So it enables them to run a program that is value for money, that resources are invested wisely and effectively. Observers say the map can serve as a useful additional tool alongside other malaria control measures such as mosquito nets, insecticides and anti-malaria drugs. Doctors have long warned against prolonged use of antibiotics, saying that bacteria can build resistance to drugs, eventually rendering them ineffective. The World Health Organization reported Wednesday that antibiotic-resistant bacteria now exist in many parts of the world. VOA's Latika has more. The Geneva-based WHO says its survey shows very high rates of drug-resistant E. coli bacteria, which can cause meningitis and infections of the skin, blood, kidneys and other organs. The agency's assistant director general, Keiji Fukuda, said Wednesday that the survey also found worrying rates of resistance in other bacteria, such as those that cause pneumonia, diarrhea, urinary tract infections and gonorrhea. It's clear that rates are very high of resistance among bacteria causing many of the most common serious infections, the ones that we see both occurring in the community as well as in hospitals. Romanian doctor Adrian Cercel says he has virtually no treatment left for some of his patients. During the last 20 years, the bacteria have developed very sophisticated resistance mechanisms, and we are facing a situation in which we don't have antibiotics to treat the patient due to the existence of pan-resistant germs. The WHO's survey shows that in some countries, many types of bacterial infections do not respond to antibiotic treatment in more more than half of patients. Public health specialists blame overconsumption of antibiotics, which are often prescribed for non-bacterial ailments. Jean-Baptiste Ronat, with the group Doctors Without Borders, says people also can consume the drug inadvertently by eating meat from animals that have been treated with antibiotics. So the two main dangers actually is the, the use and overuse of antibiotics in, in, uh, in the food factory and in animals production, especially the fact that we use the antibiotics as a, as a growth factors since ages in US and all over the, the world. It have, been, it have been restricted in Europe since 2001. And the second one is the overuse in human uh, health. 
taking into account that most of the time people take antibiotics because they have a common cold and because the patient want to have an antibiotic. Corona and others say the world is returning to conditions similar to the era before antibiotics. That means in the, ni- in the 19, so before the First World War, where, the, where we had no antibiotics and where we were just dying because of urine tract infection of, or because of, of uh, uh, pulmonary infection. So this is what's going to happen in the future. The WHO report describes the problem as a major threat to global public health. It recommends that people use antibiotics only when prescribed by a doctor. They should complete the full prescription, never share antibiotics with others, and never use leftover prescriptions. Slatica Hoke, VOA News, Washington. And that's our Africa 54 Health Report for today. Back to you, Vincent. Well, you know, thank you very much. Be sure to watch Lino Madu's health updates every Tuesday and Thursday right here on Africa 54.